This video is brought to you by RVGenset.com. Hey guys, today we are doing a generator review not just any generator, the Champion Dual Fuel Inverter Generator, also known as Model 100263. Very catchy name, Champion marketing guys. This is probably the most popular generator in our online Amazon store. And by the way, this generator was not sent to us by Champion. We purchased this generator on Amazon. So thanks to all of you for shopping through our Amazon store because it helps us finance our show and do these reviews. Now I'm gonna switch on economy mode. What makes this generator special is right here dual fuel. You can run this generator either using LPG, which is a liquefied petroleum gas, or good old fashioned gasoline. First up, the unboxing and setup procedure. Because it has a built-in electric start, there is a battery that must be attached, so you need to pop open the battery cover, attach the battery terminals, and then add motor oil. Like most Champion generators, this unit ships without any oil. Do not attempt to start your generator without adding oil first. You really ideally should put the generator through a little break-in period. The break-in period lasts five hours. During that time, they want you to be running dyno oil or old-fashioned non-synthetic motor oil. After the five-hour break-in period, you can switch over to synthetic oil if you prefer. And by the way, I always put Arch Oil Friction Modifier in my engines. On the left side is where you will find the battery access panel and also the air intake. On the top of the units are two nice grab handles. I really like the design of these Champion inverter units. It's just a very logical layout to me. On top you'll find where you add gasoline. Sadly there is no fuel gauge. You're kind of left guessing when it comes to how much is in the tank. Inside there is a little filter to help filter out really large impurities in your fuel. This unit holds about 1.6 gallons of gasoline. I've de-stickered this unit after unboxing it and removed all the various California warning stickers on there. Notice, you folks in California should not inhale the exhaust or drink the motor oil. Either one could be hazardous to your health. Now let's take an up close look at the face of the unit and the main control panel. On the upper left, you'll see what all the excitement is about. This is the fuel selector switch. And when it is in the three o'clock position, shall we say, it's set to gasoline. So now the generator will run off gasoline. But if we rotate it, to the 12 o'clock position, we're set to run off Propano LPG, liquefied petroleum gas. Right next to the fuel selector switch is your choke. Next to the choke is an economy mode switch. You need to have this off when you first start the unit. When this is switched on, the engine will throttle down. You'll get a lower noise output during times of lower electricity demand. Above the economy switch is the on off switch. This unit does have a built in electric start, which is very nice. To the left, you will find the recoil start. So in the case of a dead battery, for example, you can start the unit with the old fashioned lawnmower technique. Next to those switches, you'll find some warning lights. The top is a low oil warning light. The unit has a low oil indicator and it will shut off the engine if the engine level gets too low. Beneath that, there's an overload warning light. If you place too much of an electrical demand on the unit, then this will illuminate and the unit will stop outputting electricity through the outlets. You'll need to 
shut everything down and reboot to get electricity out of your generator. Beneath the overload light is uh, just green output light. When everything is running as it should, this will light up green. Next to these warning lights and indicator lights is the RV Ready 30 amp outlet. Now you guys know I love this feature. Many generators, even those that include some form of 30 amp power, do not include an RV Ready outlet. And a lot of generators, you have to use an adapter here. It's a usability issue. The adapter is one more element of complexity that can wiggle loose and just cause you some problems with the generator. So I really love that Champion includes an RV Ready outlet. To the upper right is a battery on off switch. This will illuminate when it's turned on and your battery will last for a couple of days, I think, without even running the generator. Anytime the generator is running, you are recharging your battery. Beneath that light, you'll find a couple of circuit breakers, 30 amp and 20 amp. Here we have a couple of 20 amp plugs and to the left, you've got your DC circuit breaker and a 12 volt DC outlet. To the lower left, there is a spot for a grounding wire. Uh, I've never seen anybody actually ground these things in the field, but I'm sure the best practice is to do so. And on the lower right, you will find the parallel operation outlets with a set of parallel cables, which are not included. You can actually run two of these units in parallel to get even more power output. How much power are we talking about when we look at this generator? Well, it depends on which fuel you're running. When running off gasoline, you can expect 3,100 running watts of power. That's consistent power output from this generator. But if running off propane, that number drops to 2,790 running watts. So I mean roughly 10% less if you're running off of propane. The unit is intended to be run off of standard 20 pound and 30 pound propane tanks. And of course, Champion includes the little hose and adapter that you'll need to attach a propane tank to your generator. Again, we rotate the fuel selector switch to the 12 o'clock position, and that reveals the hose quick connect where we can push in the outer sleeve of the hose and push in the quick connect attachment, pull it out. You can see that the quick connect snapped out and now we have a secure attachment to our hose and then we can, can just easily screw in the other side of the hose to our propane tank. And now we're cooking with gas. Either propane or gasoline we can choose from. Startup procedure is basically the same whether you're starting off gas and propane, but like when you shut everything down, you definitely want to close off the propane at the source and then let fuel starvation shut down the generator. To the right of the unit, you'll see the exhaust port. And frankly, I wouldn't have any kind of fuel downwind from this generator exhaust because it's gonna kick out a lot of heat when the generator is working. And there is a folding handle uh, that you can use with the wheel kit to move the generator around. On the left of the unit, are the never flat wheels, which guess what, should never go flat. So it's a pretty nice little wheel kit and you never have to worry about inflating these wheels. Also in the box, I wanna point out the Champion includes a funnel, a little USB adapter that you can plug into 12 volt to recharge your portable electronic devices. This propane hose with a regulator and you can attach this little cover to your regulator and it helps you with storage because you can just clamp it to one of the handles of your generator if you want. So that's a pretty nice little feature. And on the back of the generator is where you will find the access panel to add oil to the unit to do an oil change. 
All right, so since propano is what this unit is really all about, why don't we start the generator using propane? First of all, we're going to open up the valve on top of our fuel tank. So now propane is flowing through the regulator down to our unit. And I just want to quickly point out, you should never, ever start a generator indoors because carbon monoxide will kill you in minutes. I'm a trained professional. Do not try this at home, kids. With that said, we're going to pull out the choke and attempt starting the unit with the electric start. So there you hear it. Now I'm gonna engage the economy mode and we'll hear it throttle down. Right now the generator is running normal speed but when you engage the economy mode it gets a good bit quieter and in order to properly stop this unit what champion really wants you to do is use fuel starvation so you close off the fuel at the source it pretty quickly died once it lost the fuel coming from the source. All right guys, so you can see that our Champion dual fuel sits quite nicely beneath our tonneau cover. And now it's time for the weightlifting portion of the competition. Champion says that this weighs 95 pounds. Are you ready? I'm ready. Drum roll please. I probably wouldn't want to lift one much heavier, but it's doable. This is not meant to roll on gravel. <laughs> Might want to hit the gym before buying one of these. Actually, just use the I'm gonna rotate it this way. What we've done here is orient the exhaust pointed towards the woods. Because I think in the real world, isn't that what you would do? Now, if you're in a campsite, you're just gonna orient the exhaust in the best possible manner, directly toward those neighbors you don't like. Next, we're going to place our digital sound meter 25 feet from the generator which for some reason is the industry standard for these things. Let's see, this is only 14 feet. 25 feet from the generator. Just to try to minimize any kind of sound bouncing off our truck, we're gonna clear it out of the area just a bit for a pristine laboratory environment. Generator's running outside right now on gasoline. I'm turning on the AC, set to Arctic 50 degrees. I want this thing to be a meat locker, and fan is on low. So there comes our cool air. Now let's check the noise. So we're currently running our air conditioner on low fan, and I'm gonna get quiet, and we're gonna see what the digital sound level meter reads. So actually it's clocking in a little bit quieter than maybe I expected. Champion claims a noise output level of 59 decibels. I do have it in economy mode right now and it's running the air conditioner on low fan and it was about what 57 and a half to 58 decibels. 
Again, that is with the exhaust pointed away from us. Next, I'm gonna rotate the exhaust to the side and just see what kind of difference that makes. So now that we've rotated the exhaust to the side, I'm gonna get really quiet. Hopefully the cicadas will get quiet. and We'll see what kind of noise output we have. With the exhaust pointed to the side, noise was kind of going back and forth between 59 and 60 decibels, depending probably on these cicadas. We're in the south right now, and these insects get pretty noisy late in the day, in this particular time of day, so we're kind of at the mercy of our environment here. All right, so not too bad, and again, that was on gasoline. Gasoline will output a little bit more power than propane. But now we're gonna have some fun and we're gonna put the dual fuel to the test. This is a pretty much garden variety tank of propane that you could pick up at any big box home store. I'm gonna rotate our selector to propano. So we just push this back slide in one end of our hose and make sure it's securely fastened and you can see everything's set to propane now I'm gonna open up the fuel ideally you should probably double check everything for leaks and ideally yes you want to start your generator without having your RV plugged into it and with economy mode turned off we're gonna pull out the choke. Now I'm gonna switch on economy mode. It gets a lot quieter. So we're gonna plug in our camper. I'm gonna kick on the AC. So now we're running the generator completely off propane. We're gonna turn on the air conditioner and see what kind of noise output there is. AC is on. Come on, there it goes. I can confirm we have cool air coming out of our air conditioner vents. Much needed tonight, if you haven't noticed. I'm soaking wet over here. The things I do for you. Note that we have the exhaust pointing sideways. We're gonna go check the digital sound meter. So we're right at 59, and that's where it pointed to the side. I'm gonna rotate the exhaust to the back next. Okay. So yeah, pointing the exhaust back towards the woods getting about 58 decibels of noise output. It's running the air conditioner on low fan right now. I would just say it's matching Champion's claims, which has not been the case with every generator we've tested. But we really have an issue with our environment here. The cicadas are pretty loud. So we're gonna turn off the generator and see what our base noise floor is. Cicadas. Yeah, so we're surrounded by cicadas here in the Lolojo National Forest and just with no generator running at all, at times they can produce 59 decibels of noise. So that says something about these guys. Mm -hmm. And that's why I'm not a NASA scientist running a research lab here. I would say, to my ears, the unit sounds like I expected. Basically, it has met Champion's claims for noise output. So if 59 decibels works for you, that's what you're gonna get. Champion has done a great job, I think, 
in balancing build quality and cost. I find that these cases, although they are plastic, they're a pretty durable, hardy plastic. We've had our other champion for two years now and have had really no issues whatsoever with regard to its performance. It started every time we've wanted it to start. It's powered everything we've needed it to power. I would say the only question in my mind concerns the noise output. These Champion units are a little noisier than Honda and Yamaha and Atima. So you have to decide whether the noise output works for you. That would be my only reservation. The unit has a three-year limited warranty and Champion, by the way, has an excellent reputation for customer service. If you do have any kind of problem with your generator, I'm pretty confident that Champion will do what's necessary to make you, the customer, satisfied. So that's it guys, a look at the Champion dual fuel inverter generator. A great little generator that produces electricity that's safe for portable electronic devices. <laughs> Do you have one of these units? If you do, please chime in in the comments. Let us know how it's working out for you. If you're in the market for one of these units, we invite you to do your shopping through our store on Amazon at amazon.com slash shop slash long, long honeymoon or through rvgenset.com. Until next time, I'm Sean. This is Long Long Honeymoon where we say lo, lo, ho. This video is brought to you by rvgenset.com.